Hi, my name is Zach. I'm going to be walking you through how to use Scope. Uh, when you first create a Scope account and log in, you will see these onboarding cards. They're just giving you a brief overview of what the Scope application does. As you click through it, they'll give you some helpful tips. Um, you can use Scope to find lots of high value keywords, both in the web application and in the Chrome extension. I'm gonna be going over how to use both in this video. Um, you can optimize your listings with these newfound keywords uh, to make sure that you're getting the most amount of traffic to your listings. Um, you can also see how products have changed over time by tracking those products. I'll go over how to do that in the web app as well as in the extension. Um, and you can also discover new products um, by looking at this tool to see uh, stuff that you wouldn't have otherwise noticed. Uh, when you first get into the web application, uh, you'll see this banner up at the top um, prompting you to download the extension. I definitely recommend starting by downloading that extension. That's going to be how you do a lot of the keyword and product discovery in Scope. Uh, when you click on that button, it'll take you over to the Chrome Web Store to start that download. Uh, just click here on Add to Chrome. Um, and you're gonna be good to go. Um, once I've done that, it's gonna check to verify a couple things and pop up this final prompt and you just click add extension. Um, when you've added the extension, it'll open up a second tab telling you that you do need a uh, Seller Labs account. So if you had found the extension before you'd create your Seller Labs account, this would help walk you through creating that Seller Labs account. What I showed you is if you had already had an existing Seller Labs account and went to log into Scope initially. Um, now that the extension is installed, we can go to Amazon um, and try out the extension. I'm going to start with that and then show you how when you start tracking items in uh, the extension, they start to show up here in the web app. Um, so I'm gonna open up a separate, separate tab and go to amazon.com. And when Amazon loads up, I'm just going to do a general search. Um, for the sake of this demonstration, we're going to use Apple Slicer as the product that we're looking at. Also, when you first open the extension, uh, it's going to give you uh, some overview of what the extension can do and give you the option to watch tutorial. Um, this is on the Amazon homepage. Uh, the extension will change depending on which style of page you're on on Amazon. When you're on a search results page, it'll give you information about all the products on the search result page, on the search result page. And when you're on product pages, they'll give you specific information about that product, including the keywords that that product ranks for. I'll go into detail about that as we go along in the demonstration. All right, so I'm gonna do a search for Apple Slicer. And as that search comes up, as that, the results load, um, you can see that the extension will pop back open. It remembers the state that you left it in on the previous page. So if you had it open on the previous page, it'll come open again. And it's going to load up the information as it gets it. So you can see that it loads those first results and then goes down the rest of the list. But you can see that there is information for each of the products on this page. So it starts with the first product that is not a sponsored product. So these first four are sponsored products that people are paying to have in that position. So Scope is not detecting that and showing those positions. It's just showing you the organic positions of these products. But it lifts off the, the product name, what brand it is, and then the category that it's in gives you the price, rank, and then estimated sales and estimated revenue, and then the number of reviews and the current star rating, plus here at the end, uh, the number of sellers on this particular ASIN. Um, the estimated sales is looking at the sales rank of the product, um, and then predicting the sales from that. Uh, estimated revenue is directly related to estimated sales. Up here at the top, you also have averages for all of the main columns that you'd be interested in. So if you're considering selling this type of product, like an Apple Slicer, you can see what the average price on page one is for these products, plus average sales rank, and then average sales. Um, if you want to download this information and keep it in your own system, filing system, uh, you can do so by clicking on this product CSV button, and this will export a CSV of everything that you see here in the extension. Um, so a couple things I wanted to point out on this page that you might not be familiar or make sense when you first look at it. This icon, the little uh, binoculars icon, this is 
what we use to indicate a watch. And in scope, when you watch something, that's basically saying that we're going to start tracking it for you. So any item or keyword that you're interested in, click on this icon to start watching this. This will tell scope that it's important to you and we'll start updating this item with new information every day. Um, if you don't watch the item, we do collect information on pretty much every product that we can find, but it's not going to be as regular as if you tell us it's important and then start tracking it. So right now I've clicked this icon next to the word apple slicer. So this is saying that this keyword is something that I'm interested in since I'm for the sake of this example, looking to sell an apple slicer. So it'll update this keyword and I'll show you where you can see that information in the web app a little bit later on in the demonstration. Um, I'm going to go through and look at one of these examples. I'll choose this one here. Um, and if I want to start watching this product, I can do so on the next page when I click into the product detail page, or I can start watching it by clicking on the icon here to the, in the far most left hand column as well. So if I'm interested in watching all of these items that I see to get more information on them consistently, I can go through and start watching all these products by clicking down this list and then they will be populated into the web application so that I can perform other tasks and actions um, and keep track of them easily, easily, sorry. All right, so when I click into the product page on on Amazon, uh, it'll start to load up and then the extension will load as well and start to display the keywords that this product ranks for. Uh, this is really helpful so that you can start to optimize your listing if this is a product that you're already selling or if I'm looking to find a new product, you can see what kind of routes people use to get to this product on Amazon. For all of the keywords, you will have a last refreshed timestamp this is important to note, um, if you start watching the product and you can see that Apple Slicer that I watched on the previous page shows up with that icon in dark green. Um, if I want to make sure that these keywords update regularly, I need to start watching them. Um, but if the timestamp is old, like three months ago for this Apple Cutter Slicer Corer, this would mean that the information is potentially out of date. So if that's something I find myself interested in, it's important to go ahead and start watching that. Um, but with each of these keywords, you get a score. Score is basically indicating how strong of a keyword is, is that keyword. Like, is it a good keyword to use on Amazon? Search volume is an estimate of how many searches per month this keyword generates. Uh, CPC bid is what our guess is, is how much it would cost to start bidding on this um, in, with Amazon's PPC. Uh, position is if you search this keyword, Apple Slicer, like the one I used previously, then this product would show up in the fourth position on the page. Um, so as I go through, I can start watching a lot of these keywords so that I can start to keep track of them. Um, and that, that will uh, help me do research going forward. Um, over here in the left-hand column, we have idle item summary information. Uh, this is going to be similar to what we saw on the previous page in those columns, um, but this is breaking it down or making it more specific to this product with a little bit of extra information, such as daily sales. Uh, and then we have a profit and fee calculator below. So you can enter in cost of goods. So if I can source this for uh, uh, $100, but $1, um, then you can see that my profit after Amazon's fees and FBA fees would be about $2. Um, so that's helpful when making decisions about what to source and just to get more information on it. Um, also, you can click here on the history tab, and this will give you information about the item's price history. So you can see if the seller has run any promotions lately, um, just to keep an idea of what your competitors are doing. Um, and you can also look at the search rank, or sorry, sales rank history, um, and to see how the product has fared over time. So this product um, is currently dropped in sales rank down to 14,000. And in the past days, it has been up as high as 4,000 or so. So this is helpful to know if what you're seeing with a product is typical or if it's at the peak or the valley of a particular trend. Uh, definitely recommend keeping an eye on the historic information, not just looking at the momentary snapshot of the page at the moment. Um, also, like on the previous page in the extension, you can click on this 
keywords CSV button to download a CSV of all the keywords that you see here if you want to manage this information in an Excel spreadsheet or elsewise. Um, okay, so that's the basic overview of how to use the extension. Um, you can hide the extension at any time by clicking on this hide scope icon up at the top right of the extension um, and open it up whenever you want. Uh, there is this text here, and I'll go ahead and point that out. This allows you to open this product page directly in the web app. So I can click on this and it'll open up a new tab in the scope web application with that product already there. Uh, what's nice about this, uh, you have everything that you see in the extension on the product page in the web app, but you do get some extra graphs for historical information, which makes that a little bit easier to digest. Not only do you get price history and sales rank history, but you get review count history and review rating history. And then below here, you have all the keywords that the product ranks for. Um, also, when you are in the web application um, and you have been tracking a product, so if I have been watching this, that tells that means that Scope has been collecting information on this regularly. Once you've done that for several days, you'll start to populate a graph of how the keyword and the products have changed over time. So you can see how this product has ranked for the keyword for as long as you have been watching that keyword with scope. So this is really helpful to see trends. You can track your competitors um, or your own products. Um, but as long as you've been watching it, you'll we'll see this icon pop up after a little bit and you can click on this icon to view the graph. And uh, yeah, definitely very helpful to look at. So this is that product page open in the web app. If I click up here at the top of the web application on watch lists, this is how you manage all the products that you products and keywords that you've indicated are important to you. Um, I went through and on that first search results page, I watched six or uh, yeah six ish pro, uh, apple slicers. Um, they by default go into an uncategorized list, but if you are wanting to look at several different types of products or if you are selling multiple different types of products, uh, you can create individual lists and group everything together. Uh, to do that, you would click here on the create new list, and then you can give that list a title like apple slicer, and then click over here on the create new list. Uh, you can enter in a list of ASINs on that create new list or here to start that list. Uh, you don't have to do that to start the list. You can also move things around once you've started watching it. You just click on that watch icon and it'll give you options of lists to move it to. So if I had apple slicers and another list for jump ropes, um, those would both show up here and then I can move products from one list to the other and then uncheck a product from a list if I no longer want it to be in there. So now that I've moved that, I can click over to the apple slicers list and see that app, that apple slicer has been moved over to that new list. Uh, so this is helpful just to, to manage and keep track of all your products. Um, Okay, uh, now that I've gone over watch lists, I will point out a couple features that are in the web application that aren't available in the extension. Um, up here at the top, you'll see Keyword Generator. Uh, if I click on that tab, it'll give me this card that says Discover New Keyword Ideas. And this is really helpful if you have a general keyword or phrase uh, that you'd like to branch out from and see other related terms. Um, I'll continue to use Apple Slicer for our example. Um, so go ahead and enter in that keyword and click on the Get Ideas button here. Uh, it'll load up uh, this page of keywords that are related to apple slicer. So potato peeler is something that's also related, plus apple slicers, plural. Uh, sometimes you will see an ASIN pop up. Uh, this is something that we're aware of and we'll be removing those shortly. Uh, but now you've got a large list of keywords related to that original term that you can use in your listing or to continue to do research. Um, like I pointed out on the extension, you do have all the pertinent fields that help you determine a keyword's value, such as search volume and estimated CPC bid range. Uh, the final column over here on the right is the total number of products on Amazon that rank for this keyword. So that's also helpful to understand how many products you would be going up against or somewhat gauge the competition. 
Um, that's the keyword generator uh, newly added. So uh, we're excited to see that in use. Uh, finally, I just wanted to make sure that I explained relevancy. Uh, this is how closely related the keyword is to the original word that you use to generate this list. Um, so something that has that bar mostly taken down, like apple pie core slicer, is less related to the original word. Um, if you also finally, uh, you can click on this icon, the Amazon icon, if you wanted to open a search on Amazon for that keyword. Um, so that can be helpful in terms of streamlining uh, your actions within the app. Um, up here at the top, there's also a tab for discovery. Uh, discovery is something that allows you to filter Amazon categories with some fields that Amazon doesn't allow you to do on their page, which can be really helpful. Um, so if I go to uh, kitchen and dining and I want to look at everything that is of a certain rank or above, um, then I can do that here. Amazon doesn't allow you to search by that. So if I want to see everything that's between rank 5,000 and rank 10,000, I can go ahead and type in those things um, and then hit apply filters and browse through the results with those criteria being met. Uh, so that can be helpful if you're doing product discovery. Uh, but I would say that the main use and the, the, the really high value add that Scope gives you is monitoring keywords, finding new keywords, and tracking the changes over time. So definitely would want to create your own personal product lists and keep track of all those keywords um, and make sure that you are using those in your listings and seeing how your competitors vary with, uh, with those keywords as well. Um, it's been great walking you through this, uh, the, the application, the extension, and the web app. Um, hope that we get to work with you and your businesses in the future.